Lots happened in the last few years. It's been a total transformation, I think, uh, across the board at both the industry level, but particularly for, for Luminar. You know, we've uh, since followed through on the vision and the promise for what, what I outlined back in 2018 in terms of what was possible from a sensing perspective, LiDAR perspective, and industry perspective in order to be able to enable autonomy and do so on production vehicles to be able to democratize safety and enhance the overall consumer experience uh, while working with a number of other companies in the space as well. So with that, uh, I think we get it kicked off. Uh, just give a little bit of background on Luminar for those that don't know. I uh, found it back in 2012 with the vision to be able to create a new type of LiDAR sensing system for the industry, build it from the ground up. You know, ended up 2017 coming out of stealth mode, showing off to the world what was technically capable and possible. Since then, you know, continued to work on commercialization, industrialization, focus ultimately towards the holy grail, it was series production. Uh, we now have over 50 commercial partners, including some of which have already started to now plan to introduce Luminar into their production vehicles with other automakers that we're working with, uh, the first of which was Volvo, to be able to do so uh, last year. And since then, it's continued to, to snowball and accelerate. So certainly been an exciting one. We've now established a global footprint as well, um, you know, and have, you know, what, what uh, you know, 400, 500, you know, internal folks and a number of, uh, and hundreds of other uh, people from partners that we work closely with, supporting the overall mission and vision that we have to be able to establish our foothold in the industry and be able to make this a much safer place. So with that, you know, from a product standpoint, the core of what we built was the LiDAR. That's where it all started, you know, building that from the ground up, getting that extreme level of performance and safety that was needed, and then building the rest of the software stack on top. Part of the core philosophy and what I talked about a few years ago and once we since executed on is building hardware and software together hand in hand for a cohesive solution that can work seamlessly together and ultimately be provided to automakers as well to be able to enable their systems and towards safety applications and autonomy applications. And this is across consumer vehicles, trucking, and robo-taxis. You see an example of some of our lead vertical partners for each, by the way, down there, with between Volvo, Dymo Trucks, and Mobileye. As we all know, why are we all here? Like, what's the biggest problem that we're facing? Well, it's safety. Uh, it, it's really what it comes down to, the, the overall mission. Um, one million lives, over one million lives, are lost on the roads globally every year. And it, it's insane to be able to think about in the context, uh, you know, as things like this are, are, are highlighted. I mean, you take it, the, the fact that, it, that this, this has been happening for some time and almost become just an accepted part of society that on the same order of magnitude of what people have died from, say, like the pandemic in 2020 is the fact that this happened on a recurring basis every single year. Uh, there's a direct opportunity for that to stop and for that to be improved. And this is something that I think the, those that solve this will have the biggest social impact on, on society from a safety perspective that uh, that could be seen out of, out of any industry. And that's part of the holy grail of, of what we've been moving forward. And uh, you know what's interesting though is that even even in, in 2020 with the, when the data came back, it, it's interesting is you would think it would start slowing down. And despite the introduction of all of these new safety technologies over the past couple of decades, They've been relatively incremental and largely offset by increased distracted driving and other things because you take a look at the fatality rate and you would think it would be going down pretty dramatically, but it's not. It's actually stayed flat and even last year it actually went up significantly, which is kind of shocking. So, you know, moving on, I think one, one other interesting data point, you know, from a safety standpoint is that uh, actually uh, in 2019, um, you know, an, an independent uh, company, AAA, uh, completed a study that really started to analyze the effectiveness of the current active safety systems that are out on the market today. And I think the results were actually pretty shocking to many in the sense that just how ineffective a lot of even the active safety systems are today. I mean, really, safety systems today are more about trying to reduce the severity of an accident rather than preventing accidents altogether. And that's when you see that when you take into account pedestrian collision scenarios, for example, they can be some of the most catastrophic scenarios. Um, the, the, the rates at which collisions can happen, even at lower speeds, you know, like just 20 miles an hour is, is, pretty, is pretty surprising. So um, obviously the theory is, is that your car should be able to take over the, the controls for the steering wheel and braking system and everything and prevent these from happening. That's the ultimate goal of where things need to go. So if you take a look at a real world example there too from the AAA testing, you take a look at some B-roll of different vehicle examples and how they handle even some of the most basic and straightforward pedestrian scenarios. And you would think that they would come to a full and safe stop, but it's actually pretty shocking how ineffective these systems are, even on modern vehicles. And that's the thing is they'll start to slow down when it comes down to it, but 
coming to a safe stop in time is, is actually very challenging because you have to be able to have enough confidence to take the control over from the driver and to be able to enable it to, to come to a safe stop in time. And at higher speeds, it's even more catastrophic, as you can see. And that's some of the most shocking aspects of it. But here's the thing. Of course, the promise of autonomous vehicles has always been hailed as the solution. Um, you know, the, there's a bunch of different companies that are working on autonomous vehicles. There's, there's, there's a, a whole industry that's, that's been formed around all of this. And, you know, you take a look at the promises that it's ultimately about, you know, saving the million lives that are lost on the road. But, you know, just, just as much as, uh, you know, we work with a lot of these types of companies and are, are heavily invested in it, also very much, you know, as much as anything, an industry skeptic as well. And I, I think it's really important to recognize the ultimate goal of what people are trying to solve for and where we're actually going with this. And, and the reality is, is that, you know, when you take a look at all the different types of companies that are, that are working to ultimately be able to do this, the, the solution that they're talking about is replacing the driver, basically saying, okay, driver equals bad, let's remove them out of the loop. Let's replace the Uber driver and create a new ride hailing, you know, utopia around uh, picking up passengers point A to point B without anyone in the vehicle. And I think it's a great long-term vision. I think it'll ultimately happen. But this is a, you know, a more of a decade-like type problem, you know, maybe really multi-decade type problem, I should say, uh, to ultimately see realized. And there, no, no one is actually working on these systems. None, none, none of these companies around making better safety systems and even autonomy systems for production vehicles, for the consumer vehicles that, you know, folks like, well, everybody in some capacity buys or leases or, or, or whatever it may be. And that's the direct opportunity that we see. So if you actually group it, this is where, while we, we've been differentiated from a LiDAR perspective, this is where really Luminar starts to differentiate itself altogether. And that's when you can start to see, we go from, other companies that are focused on replacing the driver and building test vehicles to be able to do that, to actually having a system that can enhance the driver to be able to create much better safety systems, to be able to enable this on existing production vehicles, and something that can be able to scale successfully to millions in a near-term time frame as opposed to decades. And that's something that we're very proud of, uh, and we're excited to already be kicking this off with multiple automakers to be able to see this through into reality with a true focus on safety. And again, part of the focus is on the driver, how do we take over the steering wheel and controls when it senses that it's going to get into an accident to be able to make that a much better experience. The whole point of the LiDAR is that it gives you a ground truth of everything going on. You know exactly what's ahead of you and that's how you can do what we do uniquely and safely. And we've taken these you know, $100,000 systems that have been on the roofs of these roof racks of other, other types of traditional AV test vehicles and basically brought it down to this $1,000 system that can be cleanly integrated into a production vehicle. And that's how we can make all this happen. That's why it's just so unique. So what does that mean? What does it do for you when it is on a production vehicle? Well, there's really two key areas. There's proactive safety and there's highway autonomy. Those are the, the products that we're talking about. So proactive safety is focused around active safety systems and doing exactly what we talk about of, of, of being able to prevent the accident from happening in the first place rather than just trying to incrementally mitigate the severity. And then for highway autonomy, that's where you can ultimately take your hands off, eyes off, the driver out of the loop on highway scenarios, exit to exit, read a book, use your phone, work on your laptop, watch a movie, take a nap, that kind of thing, to be able to recover that time. And there's a lot of value associated with that. But these are two very important and distinct things that can only be delivered with this kind of sensing technology and this kind of software capability that we have. This is why it's important to have a step function change in vehicle safety. There's a lot of different scenarios um, that, that, that can happen, and, and these, are, these are some types of examples in terms of what proactive safety can do with us. I won't spend too much time on this, but, but uh, it is worth noting that despite it being a minority of the amount of time driven, the majority of accidents do ultimately happen at night as well, You know, which is something that we can see very clearly, and it's the same picture that it looks like, whether it's pitch black or whether it's bright sunlight outside, or e even, even certain types of incremental weather. So you know, that's part of the value of what we deliver from a LiDAR standpoint. So just to be able to illustrate that, you take a look at a traditional automotive camera, very dark. You take a look at legacy LiDAR, very low resolution. You take a look at Luminar LiDAR, this is where you see for the first time an almost camera-like image, but with the depth sensing ability of, of what we can do. Again, just playing that over again, you know, you can, you can really start to appreciate just what, what, what goes into this. <laughs> so something that we're very proud of, but uh, what, what, what does this mean? What does it do? Okay, that's, that's, that's cool. How does this vehicle, how does this make my car safer? 
and 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 that's where you come to these other other types of scenarios. This is where you can see a real world example of what happens for like even a pedestrian braking scenario. This is a static scenario that we have. You can take a look at uh, you know a comparison of a modern EV you know versus what a luminar equipped vehicle will do in in these kinds of scenarios, and. It's it's amazing to see just how again ineffective these these current systems are, but at the same time how effective you can make it when you have enough confidence in these kinds of detections. So you take a look at another type of example. You know, it's like okay, you can stop for a static pedestrian. Uh, what does it mean if it's moving? And just as important is also knowing when to stop. Is also knowing when not to stop. Is something in the path of collision? Is something not in the path of collision? So you take a look at a couple different examples here of one where the pedestrian is in the collision path, and the car is able to come to a complete and safe stop. And the other one where it isn't, and and the car is actually continuing its trajectory, and that's 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 an important aspect because you don't want false braking events because those can actually be dangerous in their own right. All right, well, hopefully that was a helpful overview. Um, I know there's a, there's a lot of depth to all of this, but it would be great, good to give kind of a quick summary of of the ongoings for what we've had over the past uh, year or so here. And a big thank you as well to the Auto Innovator Summit, and you know look forward to what's ahead with you guys.